Hi, I'm Karen. We're here at Monta Villa Sewing Center and today we're talking about the Foff Ambition 610. In this video, I'm going to show you some basic maintenance tips. How to care for your machine on a regular basis. Now this is important because every time you sew, the feed dogs pull off microscopic bits of lint of your fa on your fabric. Think like your, your dryer. You'll need to clean out that lint trap, right? So for your sewing machine, you only need to do this, say, maybe once a week if you sew every day. If you sew maybe a couple times a week, once a month is enough. I would say when you first get your machine, clean it a little more often than you think you need to, and that'll give you an idea of how often you need to clean it. Plus, it'll help put you in the habit of, of taking it apart and cleaning it. It's really easy to do. Now, <clears throat> the manual is going to tell you to turn off your machine for safety purposes. And normally, I would agree with that, but I'm trying to teach you, so we need the light here. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the needle out, because I think that's where um, that's the most potential for danger. I'm going to just take that needle right out of there. So we undo the needle clamp screw, pull the needle straight down and off to one side. And this is a good needle. I just checked it, just changed it recently. So I'm going to put that right down here. Then we also want to take the presser foot off. Put that right down there. And that keeps it safe and out of the way. Now, to unthread your machine, always snip your thread up here by the spool. Pull the excess out that way. The reason for that is you don't want lint to build up in here. And lint can build up if you pull your thread backwards out of your machine. And if you've got lint in the tension disc, that can mess with your tension and um, that could be tension problems. So we don't want to have to clean that. By the way, if your machine seems to have some little problems that you can't take care of with cleaning out the lint, bring your machine in. In fact, I would recommend bring your machine in once a year here to Montevilla Sewing Center and our technicians will go over the machine, make sure it's really nice and clean and if there's any oiling or adjusting that they need to do, they can do it for you. Yes, it does cost money to maintain your machine. So does it also cost money to maintain your car. You use that regularly. It's, it's not a burden to take it in, have them look it over, make sure it's running smoothly. And that will prevent a lot of problems for sewing and just make your sewing a pleasant experience. Okay, but what you can do is, we're going to show you now, taking off the needle plate, you use a short screwdriver like this that comes with your um, accessories. Take, loosen these screws. I like to loosen them a little bit just so I can kind of grab them with my fingers and just do it by hand really quick and fast. And these are short little screws, as you can see. I don't want those getting lost, so I'm gonna put them down here with the needle and the presser foot so that they're out of the way. I'm also gonna take my bobbin out of there. With the bobbin case off, I can lift the presser, the uh, needle plate off. If I need to, I can lift the presser foot up a little higher to get that off. Also, we can disengage the IDT or walking foot. Now, at this point, we can see that if you've been sewing a lot of flannel, there's going to be some lint built up between those feed dogs. So you want to make sure and clean that out well. And then here's the bobbin case. Let's lift that out, clean out any lint that's in there. Now, this machine is pretty clean, but you can see there's a little bit of lint there. Um, you can also, while you're cleaning and brushing, use your vacuum cleaner hose, and that'll help pull uh, lint and stuff out of your machine. You don't want to use canned air, that aerosol, those, which you puff the air in here, because that can cause lint to go further back in your machine. So nothing that sprays air. Another thing I found about those aerosol canned air is that if you spray it long enough and hold the, the uh, actuator down long enough, it starts to spray frost. And frost is moisture, and moisture you don't want in your machine. So no canned air, but you can use your vacuum cleaner hose attachment. Usually just the brush is all I use, and that seems to be just fine. And then you want to clean your bobbin case on all sides. Make sure that that doesn't have any lint on it. <clears throat> now, to put it back together, the bobbin case is going to be remain stationary while this turns around as you're sewing. So this needs to sit right along that rim. And it needs to be positioned such that this little stopper here 
is right next to that knob right there. So I'll show you, we scoop it underneath the feed dogs, lay it down like that. And I usually like to rock it side to side a little bit just to make sure it's sitting on the rim the way it goes, but end up with the knob right there. And get a little bit more lint out of that. There we go. And then lift up the presser foot a little higher. Make sure that this little piece gets underneath the edge there. Puts it right back on. Gonna put our screws in there. Also, make sure you've got your bobbin case in there a few times. I have put my needle plate on and here's my bobbin case sitting on the on the, my sewing table. Uh, so make sure that's in there. And you can see that putting these in by hand kind of speeds the things up a little bit more. When you're sewing, I would recommend you use a good quality thread, a no cheap bargain bin thread. Uh, which can cause actually lint to build up more in your machine and in other places in your machine. So good quality thread would be like your Mettler. Mettler Metrocene, this is a 100% um, all all-purpose polyester thread is great for sewing garments, but I've also used this for quilt piecing and for surface quilting, works great. Um, it's a good quality thread that we sell here at Montevilla Sewing Center. So I'm going to go ahead and put that guy back on there. And now we're going to put the needle back in. I want to talk about needles too. The Foff sewing machines go with the Inspira brand needles. They kind of go together. Foff and Inspira support each other and you're going to get your best sewing results using the Inspira needles. Yes, you can use Foff or Glossé or something like that, but use good quality needles, whatever you do. Make sure that they're not also not bargain bin needles and change your needle regularly. When you've been sewing a lot, it's probably a good idea to change your needle, say every three full bobbins that you use. By the time you have used, used up three full bobbins of thread, that needle has gone through the fabric enough that it's starting to get dull at the tip. A dull needle can cause skip stitches, but even worse, it can actually damage your fabrics, especially your finer fabrics. So a good quality needle. And um, the size I usually get is like, 80 is a good one. The right type of needle for your sewing application is important too. If you're sewing knits, use a stretch needle. It says stretch right there. If you're sewing like a lot of quilt piecing, use what's called a sharps or microtex needle and that's meant to go through that nice uh, cotton fabric. Okay, let's put the needle back in. And I like to put my needle back in before putting the foot on. You have a tool in your accessories, it's called the multi-purpose tool. And um, I went through this on the accessories video, but this is meant to go over thick seams like your uh, jean seams. If you're doing hem on jeans, it'll help the foot get over that seam. But right here is a really neat way to put your needle in. You see, if you look closely, you can see there's a flat side. That corresponds to the flat side on the needle right there. So poke the pointy end there, make sure the flat side matches the flat side. Now you have a handle for your needle. Instead of using your fingers to hold it up to the stopper, you've got an actual tool. So I start out poking that needle right down there where it sews and then go straight up. Now if you look down here, it's hard to see, but if you're straight onto your machine, you can actually see the top of the needle up there. But I can feel that it's all the way up by just using the multi-purpose tool. This point, Tighten that up, use my screwdriver, always tighten it a little bit more than finger tight because you want it, uh, you don't want it just finger tight because it could vibrate loose and fall out. So make sure you tighten it with your screwdriver and take off your multi-purpose tool. When you put your foot back on, always make sure you can see these letters right side up, not upside down. It is possible to put the, the foot on backwards, but you're not gonna get good sewing results, especially if you accidentally hit the needle on the foot. That's not gonna be good. Also, all of your feet have this shape back here, which is, uh, it accommodates the, um, 
the walking foot. Well, all of the, the feet that have that, there's a few feet that don't have it, but most of them do. So you can tell that part matches up to where you have your IDT or a walking foot. Put that back on, hold it under here, lower your presser lever, and it puts it right back on. So that is maintaining your machine. It's quick and easy. Do it regularly, and you'll think, oh, this is great. It wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. If this video has been helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you have comments or questions, leave those in the area down below. We have lots of other vi videos here on our Montevilla Sewing Center YouTube channel, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Bye.